All right, let's begin with a quick review. We've created the concept of the tensor product space. And the first tensor product space we discussed was the space of the, the dual space tensor product with itself. Um, then we uh, created the notion of an arbitrary number of them multiplied together. And we then showed that, hey, this is the same thing. This is the same concept using regular vector spaces. There's really no reason to, del to delineate the two very much because they um, are all mappings. Everything here is a mapping. And then we mentioned the important fact that the v underlying vector space and the dual space are themselves tensor product spaces. They just are tensor product spaces with sort of a degenerate uh, tensor product um, arrangement. There is none. There's just one. But they're both maps, right? This is a map from the vector space to the real numbers. This is a map from the dual space to the real numbers. This is a map from the Cartesian product of the dual spaces to the real numbers if it was a if we limited it to just the three and this one is a map of the Cartesian products of the vector spaces to the real numbers and this one I guess I should might for completeness is a map of the Cartesian product of two vector spaces to the real numbers the arbitrary vectors of any of these let's uh, consider the last one the uh, this tensor product space here this tensor product space uh, heck we, could, we might as well just add another V to make it precise that tensor product space has basis vectors that look like E mu tensor product E nu tensor product E say delta tensor product E lambda and the components are T mu, nu, delta, and lambda. And likewise, for um, uh, this tensor product space, it would be S, let's add another V here, S mu, nu, delta, lambda, E mu, E nu, E delta, E lambda. And I made the point that the indices of these tensor components have to be ordered. However, it is redundant because the ordering is set up here in the basis vectors, but we want to preserve the ordering in the components because there's going to be a time where we use the components without the basis vectors. In fact, that is the more common usage. We're going to discover in a moment uh, why that why that works. In fact, why don't we just do it right now? Let's take a look at, so say, um, uh, well, let me finish up with the rest of the vector spaces. Then there are vector spaces of this type, which um, uh, would look like, let's say, let me see, let me see, let me see, V, vector space V, um, dual space, dual space, and those basis vectors would be E mu, E nu, E delta, E lambda. And the component for that would look like this, R mu nu delta lambda. And again, we're preserving the ordering, so you, these delta lambda unambiguously follows the R mu nu. Now, I wanted to define before we uh, showed how these vector spaces worked again, I want to um, define the concept of rank. The rank of a vector space is very simple if all of the either the vectors or the dual vectors are, well, let's say the rank of a vector space works like this. The ve vectors always come first and dual vectors always come second when considering rank. This is a pretty much an arbitrary convention, but 
technically speaking, the only thing that we call tensors are things that are arranged in tensor products where vectors are first and dual vectors are second. It's okay if there are no vectors at all. If it's only dual vectors, that's okay. But if there are any vectors, they come first and the dual vectors come second. That, that does not mean that objects like this are illogical for some reason, say like that. This, this thing, which would have a basis vector that looks like this, is perfectly acceptable map, and it works just the way you would expect it to work. But for some reason, we don't call that tensors, and I think it's because the idea of a rank is, is, uh, needs to be, have some specificity to the ordering. So the idea of a rank is that a, a vector is rank 1, 0, a covector is rank 0, 1. This object here, this object here, has two vectors followed by two covectors, so that is rank 2, 2. This one here, which is four covectors, is rank um, zero four, and th likewise this one will be four zero. So the rank, when you see the the rank described, you always understand the first is the first number is the number of vectors in your uh, tensor, and the second is the number of covectors, and it presumes it presumes that the vectors come first and the covectors all come second. So an object like this, you can't write a rank in this form because a covector actually comes first and that's not the convention. So these things we don't call tensors. However, understand everything here is called, is a multi-linear product. It's all multilinear products. No matter what they look like, they are all uh, multilinear products. And they all operate the same way. They all operate as maps in exactly the same way. And in fact, let's talk a little bit about how they operate as maps right now. So um, I'm going to take as an example um, the tensor product space V, V star. The way we write the tensor product space for that is T with a 1, 1. And that's because the rank is the rank is the uh, vectors and covectors, right? So for example, V, V star, V star would be T 1, 2, like that. Okay? And that and this represents the set of all possible tensors of rank 1, 2. Okay? Likewise, this is the set of all possible tensors of rank 1, 1. Okay? So that's sort of a quick way of writing. This is a quick way of writing that. They both mean the same thing. But now we're using the rank as a concept. If we wanted to do the, if we wanted to note, uh, write down the set of all possible tensors that looked like this, Right, which is technically, as I pointed out, it's not a tensor using that strict definition of the word. However, it is a multilinear product that's fully easy to understand. We wouldn't use this symbol. We'd have to come up with something else or just leave it like that. Okay, but let's say for a moment, now we're working with, um, with uh, say, this guy here. So we know that, we know that uh, a basis vector in that is E mu, whoops, uh, e mu, e nu, e lambda, and that is a map, that particular basis vector is a map, and it's going to operate on an arbitrary one first, it's going to operate on a, uh, it needs a, a, um, a covector, so that covector will be b mu, uh, not mu, we can't use mu, b eta, e, eta, and then we need two vectors, so I'll say a, um, 
delta E delta and C gamma E gamma, right? So, ah, uh, got those backwards. Sorry, 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 sorry. Again, I'm, I just made three covectors, right? I needed to make um, A uh, delta E delta and C gamma E gamma, right? So now this map is going to operate on this uh, covector, vector, and vector. And the, uh, the first, the first uh, element, the first piece of the tensor product acts on the first slot, the second piece acts on the second slot, and the third piece acts on the third slot. That's how it has to be, right? And the result of this map is B eta E eta on E mu multiplied by E nu a delta E delta multiplied by E lambda C gamma E gamma. And this will, the, remember everything is linear, so all of these constants just pop out in front. So I get B eta A delta C gamma, and then this is E eta E mu, E nu, oops, E nu, E delta, and E lambda E gamma. And each of these, each of these are just by definition of the way the dual basis is defined, each of those are delta functions, delta eta mu, delta nu, Delta and delta gamma gamma. This is sort of this is sort of a little sick thing, right? Where delta is used as the delta function and as an index, but we can all see what's going on. So these allow us to just eliminate these indexes and clean everything up. So I end up with I, I can actually choose which index to do, but I'll go with B mu A uh, nu and C lambda. And that is, this here, is the result of this mapping. This is a real number. One real, three real numbers multiplied together. This is a mapping. This is a map that takes an element of the Cartesian um, product space that mirrors this thing. So that Cartesian product space is V star Cartesian product V Cartesian product V. And certainly, this is an element, V star, a... a um, this is a covector, this is a vector, this is a vector. So this is an ordered pair that matches this Cartesian product. This is a map from the Cartesian product space to the real numbers. Here's the map, here's the uh, element of the Cartesian product. We're, this is going to be considered the notation for mapping, unlike this, which was the earlier one that we used. And the result of that map is this real number right here, right here. Now, of course, this thing is one is is um is the basis vector for um, if you, if I if I were pick out a particular basis vector right mu I might say was zero and nu would be three and lambda would be one or uh, three and one and then this would end up being zero zero three and one for example because these delta functions right would be zero um, three and one. But uh, we didn't actually do it that way this time. The point is, one of the things to realize is this always happens. You get this every single time you do it, right? And you always end up with these delta functions. And then you always end up with uh, replacing the subscripts using these delta functions. And because of that, it turns out if you know that this always happens, you can kind of get rid of these uh, basis vectors and just work on the coefficients. Um, in this case, the coefficient here was 1, but if this was actually an arbitrary basis vector of, of um, this tensor product space, then I would have actually had, or not an arbitrary basis vector, but an arbitrary tensor, I would have had a t mu nu lambda out in front, right? And then this would have ended up 
being, this would have ended up being T mu nu lambda, oops, not gamma, but lambda here, right? And then this would have been the answer. Let me, let me erase these little ones and threes that I put up there for no good reason. This will be the answer. And now you see that our indices are going to contract with this tensor, right? This tensor. And we could have gotten from here to here without these basis vectors at all. If I had just written an expression that looked like t mu nu lambda, skip the basis, um, skip the uh, uh, basis for the tensor product space, and skip the bases for the independent, uh, the individual uh, vector and covector spaces, and I could have just written b um, mu a nu c lambda right from the start and uh, gotten right gotten right past these uh, delta functions right that is I just I just um, I learn how to contract these things using just index gymnastics and this I could get right from here to here uh, with skipping all of these uh, uh, basis vectors and that's actually how most general relativity books operate. They leave out these basis vectors so you don't quite see the full nature of the mapping that's going on. You're just learning a trick. And that's one of the problems with learning this stuff, is you start in most of these texts by learning some kind of trick to get tensor products, tensor contractions, a tensor multiplied by a vector and two covectors. And or they, it's even worse because they say, oh, this is a mixed tensor and a covariant vector and two contravariant vectors, right? We haven't even discussed covariance and contravariance yet. We'll get there. But they start with a trick, and you never, ever see this mechanics. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to get this lecture done.